A Travis County grand jury has indicted State Representative Donna Dukes on abuse of office charges. A conviction could put her behind bars for 28 years, along with up to $138,000 in fines. She's been charged with 13 felony counts of falsifying records to collect reimbursement for travel not related to her state duties. She's also been given misdemeanor charges for using state funds to cover an employee's gas bills, driving her daughter to school, and using campaign funds for personal purposes. Former staff members came forward with the allegations, leading to investigations by the Texas Rangers and the state auditor's office. The Rangers' findings prompted legal action from the Travis County DA's office. Citing health issues related to a traffic accident and the demands of raising her young daughter, Dukes announced in September her plans to resign on the first day of the 85th legislative session this year. The delayed resignation would not only add $3,000 per year to her state pension, but also leave her district covering parts of Austin, Maynard, and Pflugerville without representation until a special election could be called. This wouldn't come to be, however, because she backtracked on her intention to resign and was sworn in for her 12th term. A slew of potential challengers have emerged amid the controversy to vie for her seat. Dukes also has suffered a financial setback in her private affairs. An Austin American Statesman investigation found in October little to show for a million dollars paid by the Austin Independent School District over a four-year period to Duke's consulting firm to diversify its vendors. Until they were informed by the statesman, in fact, some trustees of the school district weren't even aware that Duke's $250,000 a year contract had been extended. Having already launched their own internal effort to carry out the same functions, the district canceled its contract with Duke's. As for Duke's more pressing legal woes, she issued a statement on her Facebook page of course, I am disappointed, but I expected that if sworn into office on January 10th, this indictment would follow. All I can say today is that I will be entering a plea of not guilty. For more public integrity news around the state, follow us at TexasMonitor.org.